How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. How much Ethereum do you need to retire? It's a good question. I'm sure it's something that a lot of people are wondering out there, especially as we're moving back into the bull market. ETH has been underperforming Bitcoin, but now it's showing some strength. If you actually look on coin market cap, it's up almost 5% while Bitcoin's up 1% over the last 24 hours. So I thought now is a good time to go back through and look at how much Ethereum it would take to retire based on some various scenarios. scenarios. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this. Also, if you want to trade Ethereum, there's a link underneath the video to Margex. There, there's no there's no KYC, which means you don't have to put in a lot of personal information. You can just put in an email, a password, check their terms and conditions, and you can start trading within minutes. There's also a link underneath the video to CoinW as well in case you want to buy spot Ethereum. And there's also uh, a cool trading group that you can get into through CoinW if you sign up with our link. It's completely free, but it's only available when you sign up with that link underneath the video. Uh, it's actually run by pro traders from CoinW. Now, we have some strength coming from Ethereum, actually. It's actually moving up versus Bitcoin for the first time in a while. I'll show you kind of my thought process as to what will outperform what in a second. But we did get some news just yesterday. Franklin Templeton lists Ethereum ETF on the DTCC. So the asset management firm Franklin Templeton listed its spot Ether uh, or spot Ethereum exchange traded fund, the Franklin uh, the Franklin Ethereum TR Ethereum ETF, that's a mouthful, on the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation website, a significant platform for security transactions in the U.S. The DTCC website's Create, Redeem column lists the ETF, indicate, uh, indicating its availability for creation and redemption. Now, this does not necessarily mean that the spot Ethereum ETF is going to be traded or approved by the SEC, but it is an important step moving forward. Now, at this point, we have to wait until June 11. The SEC just had pushed back uh, the, the decision. So we have to wait about a month and a half for this next decision from them. But like I said, Ethereum's showing some strength here today. When you zoom in, it has moved about 10%, 15% from the bottom on the ETH Bitcoin chart, which means it's moving up versus Bitcoin. Uh, and we continue to see more Ethereum burned over the last 591 days since, I think this was since uh, the burn started taking place. We've seen negative 0.225% burned a year. Actually, since my video I think it was about six months ago, I made another Ethereum, retire on Ethereum video. We've actually seen about 300,000 Ethereum burned. It's actually more difficult to buy an Ethereum now, not only because of the price, but because if everyone tries to go buy one, there are less out there. Now, I want to show you kind of how much you need to retire here in a second, but uh, I should state that Ethereum looks good right now but it has been on a massive downtrend versus Bitcoin. I think it's really important to look at the Ethereum Bitcoin chart right now. And the reason for that, the reason we look at different assets priced in Bitcoin is because during a bull market, everything's gonna go up pretty much. I mean, there are some ex some exceptions, but the large cap cryptos are most likely gonna go up. The question is, do they go up more than Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin is considered less risky, less volatile. It's definitely got more people that own it. And now with the ETFs, it's accessible to so many more people than any other asset. So if you want to buy something that's not Bitcoin, that's a cryptocurrency, it really does need to outperform Bitcoin because it's just riskier, right? So I want to look at ETH priced in Bitcoin, so when the chart goes down, it means that ETH is losing value versus Bitcoin. And when it goes up, it means ETH's gaining value in Bitcoin. I want to show that chart. And again, you know, the normal person might see ETH at 3300 and think, oh, wow, whoever bought that in the bear market did really well, which they did. They made a 3x. 
but Bitcoiners have made a forex. So we're going to take a look at the chart here. When you zoom out, you can see it much more clearly. Ever since September of 2022, so a year and eight months, something like that, a year and seven months, we've seen a downtrend on the ETH Bitcoin chart. And we've seen lower lows and lower highs. This is this is cool to see, you know, Ethereum breaking out a little bit against Bitcoin. But I think it is important to remember that just a few, well, just a month ago, month and a half ago, Ethereum was still up 15% higher versus Bitcoin than it is now. And it just had lower high, lower high, now slightly higher high. But I'd be looking for us to get to about this point point zero six point zero six two mark maybe before I'm convinced that we're going to make a, another uptrend before I think that it's really going to outperform Bitcoin. seems like Bitcoin dominance has just dominated. <laughs> Bitcoin dominance has gone up a lot over the last year and a half. And a lot of that is coming down to Ethereum just not performing as well. Right? Big money flows into Bitcoin right now. Right? Institutions are buying up the ETFs, even if they haven't much the last couple of weeks. There have been a lot of inflows into them. And people that want maybe better performing cryptos aren't necessarily buying Ethereum. They're going further down the line. They're going down to riskier cryptos. And I know Solana has also been something that a lot of people have liked recently too. I'm not telling you to buy Ethereum or Solana, but today we're gonna to be going over how much Ethereum, assuming you want to buy Ethereum, you need to retire. And to be clear, before we get started, uh, I'm not saying that it's smart to retire just on one asset, right? I think even if you're very heavily invested in crypto, it makes sense to invest in a variety of cryptos. Unless you want to just go all Bitcoin, for example, a lot of people just go all Bitcoin. But if you're going to invest in Ethereum, I think it makes sense to have some Bitcoin too and maybe some Solana. And I also think it makes sense to have assets outside of crypto as well. But now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's take a look at how much it takes to retire. So first of all, we need to know how you want to retire. Do you want to spend $50,000 a year, like live in a small house, maybe in the Midwest? You don't go on very many vacations. Or do you want to live wherever you want, have a Lamborghini in the driveway, uh, have a nice boat, pay for your kids' uh, private tuition, all that, and everything in between. So we're going to look at five different scenarios, whether you want to retire really maybe bare bones something like $50,000 a year. Maybe you want to spend $100,000 a year. Maybe you want to live well at about $20,000 a month, about $250,000 in annual expenses, or you want to live on a million dollars a year. Obviously, you're going to need different amounts of Ethereum depending on how you want to live. Also, maybe you just want to invest a lot over the next 10 years and then you just want to let it sit there. Maybe Ethereum continues to grow at 10% a year. It's a mature asset at that point. So you just want to put as much away as possible in the next 10 years and then just let it sit there for the next 20 years. For example, compounding at 10%. That's going to be the least amount of Ethereum you need because you're going to be waiting a while after you get that amount. But the cool thing about that scenario is you can work really hard for the next 10 years. Maybe you have kids or maybe you want to take some time away. You don't have to make as much at your job because you're not going to have to invest really. And then you can just dial it back, maybe barista, right? Something like that. Go to a cool country, work there versus, you know, just working your butt off uh, and still retiring maybe in the next 10 years. So those are the five different scenarios. Let me know if I need to clarify that in the comment section. And then the next question is, where does Ethereum go? And I'm not going to tell you where it's going to go. You're going to use your own predictions uh, for this. So we're looking 10 years out. We're going to look at five different scenarios. Maybe you think Ethereum is just going to go to 5,000. I think that's very bearish, right? Because Ethereum's already at 3,300. It's been at 4,800 before. So let's say you think it's going to be at about the same price it was at the peak of the last cycle 10 years from now. Okay, very bearish. If I mean, I, I think everyone would say that Ethereum is either going to be 
ten thousand dollars in ten years or pretty much zero but but let's go with five thousand the next scenario fifteen thousand so you're saying okay from 2022 to 2034 the peak is only going to go up 3x okay then forty thousand dollars eighty thousand dollars a hundred and sixty thousand dollars now why pick those numbers well they're a variety of uh numbers that are varying bullishness, uh, varying levels of bullishness. So in this scenario, like I said, it's pretty much the same price that we hit at the last peak. This is right around two billion dollar or two trillion dollars. It's close to the peak of where Bitcoin's been. Like it would be just slightly higher in terms of market cap than Bitcoin was at seventy four thousand dollars. Here we're looking at about five billion dollars in terms of market cap. And part of this number, the reason I picked it is because we've seen Raul uh, Paul and other uh, people, other famous crypto investors say $40,000 is possible, like this bull run or last bull run. But we're going to say about $40,000. This is just short of $10 trillion, and then obviously just short of $20 trillion. If we assume gold continues to appreciate a couple percent each year for the next 10 years, this would put Ethereum right around the same market cap as gold. So this is the ultra bullish scenario. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but you know, it's a possibility. It's a non-zero chance. So in my opinion, I'd say it's probably a pretty good chance that Ethereum somewhere between 15 and 40, if you really want my opinion. Of course, that is a wide range as well, but let's continue. So here are the five different situations. Right? Maybe you want to coast, so you invest a lot, and then you just sit on it. It continues to compound for another uh, ten, uh, another twenty years, or maybe you just want fifty thousand dollars a year. You're going to live more bare bones or traditional, uh, where you want a hundred thousand dollars. And the reason I call it fire, that's financial independence, retire early. Right? It's a, it's a common term in the retire early community. And then you can go into the ultra wealthy category here. So obviously you're going to need a lot more Ethereum if you think Ethereum is just going to be about $5,000, right? It makes sense. We're going to use a 5% withdrawal rate, um, but we're going to say you get 2% staking reward. So really it's a 3% withdrawal rate, and then you get 2% staking rewards. You stake some of your Ethereum or you somehow get yield on it. There are going to be different ways to get yield on it in the future that are way more safe than we had last bull run. But you need about 400 and the numbers work out so that you need 400 times 5,000 gives you about $2 million. We're talking about a 5% withdrawal rate or 3% plus 2% staking reward. So you get 5% yield on that $2 million. That's a hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. Hopefully you're following all the math. Typically in traditional finance or when you just have S&P 500 index funds, people use the 4% safe withdrawal rate, basically just saying, hey, if you have a portfolio of a million dollars, you can typically take $40,000 out a year in the principal and what you have in terms of growth will make up for the withdrawal. So that's why we're using about that percentage here. But again, you get some staking rewards. So that's kind of nice. Now, that is if Ethereum only hits $5,000. That's a lot of Ethereum. I mean, you need about $1.2 million or something now of Ethereum to be able to get to this point. But a lot of people would agree that Ethereum is probably going to be much higher in price by 2034. So let's say it goes up to 15000 A lot of people think that maybe 10000 or 15000 is possible even this cycle. Okay. Well, if you want to spend $100,000 a year, then you'd only need about 133 Ethereum. Still, still a lot though. So if you think uh, if you think Ethereum is going to go up to 40,000, you'd need about 50. I realize that that's still a lot for a lot of people. That's, that's expensive now, right? That's $150,000 worth of Ethereum. So what if you got a little bit more aggressive on the withdrawal rate? It's a little bit riskier because you could run out of money faster but you could take maybe 6%. So 2% staking, 4% withdrawal, you need less. So instead of, for example, 50 Ethereum, you need about 41.75. Now, I realize that's still difficult for a lot of people, but 
keep in mind, we're talking about an asset that's going up 5x and you still need millions of dollars, right? If you want to live off of it. So it's not going to be super easy. It's not going to be something that you can put in a couple hundred dollars and then all of a sudden retire or a couple thousand dollars. No, I mean, we're talking about an asset that's only going to go up 5x in 10 years, which is still a good return in traditional finance, but it's not super easy to retire very quickly. But keep in mind, this has gotten more expensive. So the cost, the last time I did this to retire on $40,000, a $40,000 Ethereum based on these numbers, to get 50 Ethereum, it would have only cost you about $77,000 last time I made this video. Because last time I made it was during, I guess, the beginning of the bull market, like right when prices were starting to go up. So it was $77,000. Now it's $137,000. So if you can do this at opportune times, if you don't wait until the bull market is obvious, it's a lot easier to buy, right? So $137,000 is the cost now. It used to be seventy-seven, dollars but if you wait even more, like the bottom of the bear market was a great time to be buying, obviously. At $900 Ethereum, which wasn't even exactly the bottom, it would have only cost about $45,000. Again, this is if we do this $40,000 Ethereum scenario. And if you had been in for a while, if you had gone in during the last bear market, not not 2023, but the one before that, you could have gone it for $4,100. So the key is to dollar cost average and buy at times of fear. You don't want to be buying when everyone realizes that this is a bull market, you want to be buying when no one really knows. And of course, there's more risk, or it feels like there's more risk. But when you look at the risk to reward, it's actually much better. Think about this. If you had bought around $1,000 Ethereum, your gains up until now would be the same as if you bought now and waited for Ethereum to hit about $12,000. That's kind of crazy, right? Maybe $11,000. But the incremental gains trail off after we've already had this three, three and a half X on Ethereum. Now, don't let this get you down, right? You can dollar cost average, you can start buying. Keep in mind too, most people won't ever be able to buy much Ethereum. The Ethereum supply is right around 122 million Ethereum right now. That's all the supply, even with the people that hold you know thousands and thousands, even tens of thousands of Ethereum. The supply in 10 years, let's just say it's it's diminished by 1% a year. It's going to be about 110 million. The population on Earth right now, let's say it's 8 billion. Population 10 years, 8.7. That means the ETH per person is only about 0.01. And that's assuming that it's equally distributed. It's not. Right? It, with Bitcoin, for example, there are about 2 million Bitcoin on exchanges, but close to 20 million Bitcoin they are circulating. So based on those same numbers, the ETH per person that's available might be 0.0013. I mean, that's kind of crazy when you think about how inexpensive this is or how much the average person can buy. It's only $42 worth of Ethereum if everyone were going to buy it. And of course, that would shoot up the price. So it would become much more expensive uh, very quickly. But it shows you that it is hard for most people to ever get the average amount of Ethereum because but it shows you there's not much Ethereum to go around. Let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. I hope this helped a little bit. You know, these aren't the most instructional videos on how to become super wealthy, but they are fun numbers, uh, fun videos to break down the numbers, right? Talk about uh, how close are you to your goal based on certain numbers. You know, do you think Ethereum is going to get to 40,000? And do you have 30 Ethereum already? Well, great. You might be able to retire on just Ethereum one day. But let me know your thoughts underneath the video. Again, there is a link to Marjax. In case you want to amplify your returns, maybe you want to go long on Ethereum, you can do that over on Marjax. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I will see you in the next video.